still in Second Samuel. We studied the book of Job last week, remember? Yeah. Talked about the trials and tribulations. Now we're going to uh, we're going to when we finish with Samuel, we're going to kind of uh, slide through the Old Testament in a hurry. That's what we're going to do. We're going to look at each book, but we're going to look at it in a hurry. But we're going to get some real good nuggets out of every one of what's in there. Now, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, and First and Second Chronicles are basically are all run together. We know that, okay? And so, just one of them that is kind of filled. You could, if you had to really study them, you'd have to study every one of them. So, we're going to go through First and Second Samuel here, and we're in the 16th chapter. That's where we are in the 16th chapter of Second uh, Samuel. Like I said, we studied uh, Job last week. We went through the whole book of Job <laughs> last week. Did you learn anything out of it? We hit some highlights in it, didn't we? Now, if you want to listen to that whole lesson, I want preached over there at uh, Fairfax Southern Baptist Church. It's on the website if you want to go listen. Or you're gone, Bill, if you've got a satellite, a laptop, or anything else, you, you can stay up with the classes. That, that's what you can do. You can get him a satellite deal so he can stay with the classes. I'll give you a reason to get something. <coughs> All right. Second Samuel, the sixteenth chapter. Let's look at it. Now, what happened here in the fifteenth and fourteenth chapter? We find that. Uh, <coughs> Where's the The fifteenth chapter is where I am. I had jumped over too far. I was studying way ahead and got to let my marker in there. In the 14th chapter, what happened with David and Absalom? What does Absalom mean? Absalom. Father of something. Ab. Shalom. Father of peace. Father of peace. Our father is peace. Our peace to the father. That's what his name means. All right. What happened? Absalom finally came home. Absalom killed his brother, didn't he? Over his sister. Uh, one of the brothers uh, raped his half sister, and he ended up killing, killing him, killing him brutally, killing him. And uh, basically, he was uh, exiled, and he had gone down into Hebron, okay, and stayed down there for a long time. Now <coughs> Absalom comes home. And David's sin multiplies. If I had a, if I had a title for this message in class today, it would David's sin multiplies. David's sin multiplies. Okay, fifteen and verse one. Are you over there, brother Rex? And now it came about after this that Absalom provided for himself a chariot and horses and fifty men as runners before him. All right, now Absalom provided for himself a chariot and horses and 50 men and runners before him, okay? All right. Now, Absalom, we're going to find out, is going to be deceitful. Okay? Barely. I know that. You're, you're louder on the tape than the other people are, and me. Okay, see that one's a long way from. Okay. <laughs> Muffler. <laughs> All right. Absalom provided for himself horses and chariots. And Absalom used to rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. Now, what's in the gate? You remember what's in the gate? At the gate of every city, there's a gate, an outer gate, and an inner gate, isn't it? And what's between the outer gate and the inner gate? In every city in the old days. What was it? The elders, wasn't it? Yeah, the elders. Who were the elders? The people of the church. The Pharisees. Huh? They were judges. 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 They were judges. And Lot. Remember, Lot was a lawyer and a judge. Down there in Sodom. And when you went into the city of Sodom, you went into the first gate, and in between the first gate and the second gate was an inner area in there. When you came to town, the first thing you did, you saw the courthouse. That's basically the way it was. The courthouse was the entrance to the city. 
Okay? When you came in there, if you had any problem or anything was legally you needed to take care of, you did it right off the bat. Okay? And he used uh, Absalom, peace from the Father and peace to the Father now. Look at that. Jessica? Yes, sir. You want to read that for me there? Verse number two. Sure. He would get up early and stand by the side of the road leading to, to the city gate. Whenever anyone came with the, with the complaint to be placed before the king for a decision, Absalom would call out to him, What town are you from? He would answer, Your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel. All right, now what he's going to do here, he's going to undermine his father. Now it says that David was one of the greatest judges of all, all the time in Israel, that he gave justice to, a uh, fair justice to all the people. Now Absalom, now he finally gets in here, he finally sees his father, and on the last verse, in verse 33 of the 14th chapter, when Joab came to the king and told him, he called for Absalom, thus he came to the king and prostrated himself on his face to the ground, and the king kept on kissing and hugging and, and embracing Absalom because he loved that boy more than all these other children. This is the boy he loved, but the boy had done wrong. And he exiled him. Now he, he pesters around, and he pesters with Absalom, he pesters with all the other judges and everything, he, and he's been, uh, and he, he's going to undermine his father. Politicking. Okay. Huh? Politicking. He's politic. Now let's go to 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, and verse 11. We've got to read that again. <clears throat> well, I actually go from 2 Samuel 12, 9 through 11. Uh, Brother Bill, can you read that, that real loud? Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. Go on. Oh, for you did it secretly, but I will do these things before all of you before the sun. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child, also this born to you surely shall die. Okay. Then now that's, 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 that's it. This is prophecy. Through Nathan, wasn't it? Now here we see the fulfillment of that prophecy and we see David's sins multiplied in his children. David did wrong, didn't he? Now, as far as we can tell in our life, that's the only time David ever went off the beam. In all reality, it was when he, he lusted after and he knew Bathsheba. This wasn't some woman that he saw the first time. And that he had had an affair with her for at least more than one month, at least two months, he'd had a prayer with her. And she was living with him while his father, while her husband was out fighting for David. You remember they told David to stay home, that he couldn't fight the wars anymore because they loved him too much. And they weren't going to risk his life. And so he had to stay home. I know a lot of people say when David was up there on his, on his top of his palace looking down, and he saw this woman down there and lusted after this woman. They said he should have been out fighting with the army. No, he shouldn't have been. They wouldn't let him. And we find out again later on that they won't let him. They love him. But he knew her. And he knew her husband. And her husband was a good man. And he intentionally took her from him. In deceit. And secretly. And then when she got pregnant, he sent him out with the best men of Israel. With the best. The best warriors and bodyguards of David. David's own bodyguards. And he sacrificed all those men for his lust for Bathsheba. And then he acts like he's a good guy after Uriah gets killed and said, I want to take her wife. Her, I will take this great warrior's wife and I will bring her into my home and my palace and the king will marry her and I will honor her. I'll honor him by marrying his wife and taking care of her. Uriah, yeah. it means um, Jehovah's light? Or? Jehovah is light. Oh, okay. These people were godly. Jeriah was a godly, even though he was a Hittite, you know, 
he was a godly person. Okay? And he was a saved man. A man of integrity. Yes, and a man of integrity. Now we see this. Now we come back to David. Now David's sin is going to be multiplied in the son that he loves so much. Oh boy. <clears throat> Hard thing. Verse number three. Then Absalom would say to him, See, your claims are good and right, but no man listens to you on the part of the king. He's undermining, intentionally undermining his father. Intentionally. Now his father had, had blessed him, brought him back into the home, had forgiven him, and now the first thing he does, the first thing he does, he's going to kill his father. He's going to murder his father. He's going to destroy his father's name. That's right. To see what happens. <laughs> now David lost the best men of Israel. We're going to find out how many men died because of Absalom's sin. Okay, let's go on. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that one would appoint me judge in the land. Of course, judge in the land also meant what? Who was the judge? The main judge was who? The king. So he wants to be king. And every man who has any suited or cause could come to me and I would give him a Justice. Now David was already doing that. Now he's getting them before they get to the gate of the city. He's meeting them on the outside of the city. He's got a kangaroo court outside of the city. Verse number 5. It happened that when a man came near to prostrate himself before him, he would hold out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. Talk about a politician kissing babies. Here we are. We got a politician here. And verse number six, Joanne. What does it say there in that in that uh, living Bible? This, it ought to be a good translation there. Uh, Fifteen and verse six. <clears throat> so in this way, Absalom stole the hearts of all the people of Israel. All right. In this matter, Absalom stole. Uh, dealt with all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Aslan stole away all the hearts of the men of Israel. He had swayed them, hadn't he? This is a master politician. We have a master politician. You know, just because we got these politics out here, we got all this propaganda on radio and everything else, the truth is not going anywhere. Every news program in America is bought and paid for by somebody. And they're going to cut their idea. It's just like what's going on right here. If you want to know the truth, you better get down there and look at it yourself and listen to the people without any interve intervening people in the middle. Okay? Now it came about at the end of 40 years that Absalom said to the king, Please let me go and pay my vow, which I vowed to the Lord in Hebron. Where did David rule from at first? Where was the pl first place David ruled from? I think it was... Um Hebron. Yeah. That's where David ruled from to begin with. So now he's going to go trace his father's footsteps. Exactly. He's going to go to Hebron. Now what is down in Hebron? The giants? Well, the giants were down there. Yeah, that's where the giants lived. That's where this was Caleb's land, remember? Uh, 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 Joshua and Caleb. Okay. All right. <clears throat> but what else is down there in Hebron? A girl? Nobody else gets what? A girl. A what? A girl. <laughs> well, I'm sure there are girls in every city. Right? Uh, I'm just trying to make, play it safe here, Jim. Okay. <laughs> what else is down in Hebrew? Very important place. It's a graveyard. Abraham is buried there. Isaac's buried there. Jacob's buried there. All the patriarchs are buried there in Hebrew. This is a holy place to all the sons of Israel, okay? And I'm sure they're going down there paying respect to all the bones of these people still. Right? So this is a very important place, Hebrew. All right, now verse number 8. Let's look at this the seat again, the politician. For your servant bowed a bow while I was living in Geshur in Syria, saying that the Lord will indeed bring me back to Jerusalem. I will serve the Lord. And poor old David believes him. 
And the king said to him, Go in peace. Go in peace. Shalom is what he said. And what's his name? Peace of the Father. Peace from the Father. Is that right? Absolutely. Go in peace. So he rose and went to Hebrew. But Absalom did what? He sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel. As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, What? Absalom is king in Hebron. What a rat. He said, This is a dirty rat. <laughs> all right, now, was David a dirty rat when he killed Uriah and had him murdered? And snuck around and did what he did? Yeah. But what happened when, when God called him on the carpet? What did David do? He repented. he repented. But did he get rid of the sin? He didn't get rid of the sin. Do you think that Absalom knew what his father had done to Uriah and Bathsheba and all that? We're going to find out that Bathsheba's relative is lining up against David. You think he knew or what? Well, we're going to get there, brother. We're, we're going to see it from the Scripture. And 200 men went with Absalom from Jerusalem, and they were invited and went innocently. The men were innocent. They were in, in men of integrity, and they did not know anything about this. He invited 200 men to go with him. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gileadite. This is Bathsheba's relative. And she don't like David. Or he doesn't like David because of what he did to Bathsheba. He's still holding a grudge against him. If you want to get, get your enemy, you find your if you want to do some hurt to somebody, brother or friend, you yeah. go find all her enemies. Yeah. True. Go find the enemies. Those are good friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your allies. <laughs> yeah, the ally. You go find the enemy. And then sick them on him. Alright? And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, uh, the Gileadite, and David's counselor from the city of Gilol, while he was offering the sacrifices. And the conspiracy was what? Strong, powerful, for the people increased continually with Absalom. It was working. The politics were working. <clears throat> people always want to hear the worst about somebody. Did you know that? They do. That was the king is the highest. Position in the land. Put some dirt. Huh? Put some dirt on him. Yeah. yeah. They want some dirt on him. So that's that's what he did. And now, here we go. Number 13 now. Then a messenger came to David saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. So David said to all his servants from within him in Jerusalem, Arise, let us run. You know, any other time with anybody else, what would David have done? Kill them all. He'd gone kill them. He'd have taken care of the problem right off. You know, the hardest thing to do is when those that you love so much sin against you. That's the hardest. When you're low, someone you love so much, when you ought to go out, the Indian, American Indian people. <coughs> We've got some Indians in this class here. <coughs> if you had a son or a daughter that was a worthless person in an Indian tribe, there was two or three of uh, 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 Two or three different solutions you had to it. First of all, if they were bad and they were detrimental to the whole tribe because the tribe was family them, they excommunicated them from the tribe. They kicked them out. All right? And they were outlaws. But if they still caused trouble, you know what they did? No. There was very little capital punishment among the people. Huh? Turn brother? No. Nope. They sent them away. Nope. They already did that now. But now they're gone away and they're still causing trouble to the tribe. You kidnapped them? No. Nope. They take the daddy and the mama and they bring them before the other chiefs and they say, Now, Rex, you've got a child that's bad out there. Now you brought him into the world, it's time for you to take him out. You go kill that child. You go cut his throat. Or her throat. Oh! Now, it did, now, that's right. That's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Now, that's hard. To 
So when you raised your children, you did the very best you could to be an example to them and to teach them the right things. Now, had David done that with Absalom, what did Absalom see? He didn't see all the good things David did. He saw the bad. So what is he doing? Copycat and daddy, but from the bad side only. Okay? You can be sure of one thing. Your children, if you ever do anything wrong before them, they're going to multiply that. It's going to, the chickens are going to come home to roost. All right? And that's exactly what happened here with David then. David decided, let's get out of here, for otherwise none of us shall escape from Absalom. Go in haste, let us overtake, unless he overtake us and bring down calamity on us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servant said to the king, Behold, your servants are ready to do whatever the Lord king chooses. We'll fight. We'll fight, David. Let's go get him. So the king went out and all his household with him, and the king left ten concubines to keep the house. Underline that. Concubines? Concubines. Those are his wives. These concubines, concubines are wives. In the eyes of the Lord, any woman you sleep with is your wife because you have become one flesh with her. That's the way it is. Young people, when you, when you get out into the world and you start fooling around, that you're, you're maybe leaving multiple husbands or multiple wives. Because that's, that's the way it is. God doesn't leave anything like that. That's the way it is. Okay. He had ten wives that he left. He had ten wives that he left to keep house. Now, just remember that. And remember 2 Samuel 12 and verse 11. Okay? And the king went out and all the people with him and they stopped at the last house. Now all the servants passed on beside and all the and the Cherethites and the Pelethites and the Gittites, 600 men who had come with him from Gath, passed on before the king. And the king said to Ittai, Ittai means living being or being living, the Gittite, an inhabitant of Gath, by the way, why will you also go with us, return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and an exile, return to your own place. You came only yesterday, and, I sh and shall I take... Uh, today make you a wander with us where I go where I, I go where I will return and take back your brothers and mercy and truth be with you and Ittai answered the king and said as the Lord lives and as my Lord the king lives surely wherever my Lord the king may be whether for death or for life there also will be your servant here's a faithful man by his side it is nice when a guy has faithful people to stand beside him thick and thin and Therefore David said to Ittai, Go and pass over. So Ittai to Gittai passed over with all his men and all the little ones that were with him. And while the country was weeping with a loud voice, all the people passed over, and the king also passed over the brook Kidron. Now he's leaving Jerusalem. And all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And behold, Zadok also came, and the Levites, him carrying the ark of the covenant of God, they were going to follow him too. They're going to take the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant with him. And Abi Arthur came up until all the people had finished passing from the city. And the king said to Zadok, Return the Ark of God to the city. If I find favor in the sight of the Lord, then he will bring me back here again. God will do, take care. God will fight my battle. And show me both it and his habitation. And if he... And, but if he should say this, I have no delight in you, behold, I am, here I am, and let him do with me as is good to him. David realizes that his sin is coming on his head. The chickens have come home to the roof. Now I say, God, if you want me to live through this, I'll live, if not, so be it. Then the king said to Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Return to the city in peace. Your two sons with you, your son Ahimaaz and Jonathan Abiezo. Verse number 28. See, I'm going to wait at the fords of the wilderness until word comes <coughs> from you to inform me. And there's Adok and Abiathar returned the ark of God to Jerusalem and remained there. And David went up to the ascent to Mount of Olives. And as he's going up the Mount of Olives, now just remember this. 
Yeah, remember some one of his descendants later on went up the Mount of Olives to the to the the uh, what we call Gethsemane, the wine, the olive press. That's where Jesus wept too, didn't he? Great drops of blood. And he wept at his way, and his head was covered, and he walked barefooted. Then all the people who were with him each covered his head and went weeping as they went. Now someone told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. Now Ahithophel is again Bathsheba's relative. Boy, how it's all coming home all over one thing. Bathsheba. As far as I can tell, David didn't make any other mistakes in his life. Just Bathsheba. And David said, O Lord, I pray, make the counsel of Ahithophel foolishness. And it happened as David was coming to the summit there, God, that where God was worshipped, that behold, Hushai, the archite, met him, his coat torn, and dust on his head. And David said to him, If you pass over from me, then you will be a burden to me. But if you turn to the city, said at, say to Absalom, I will be your servant. O king, as I have been your father's servant in the time past, so I will now be your servant. Then you can thwart the counsel of an event of hell for me. He said, go back and you become a conspirator. David knows that Absalom's going here and he's going to be king. Are, and are not Zadok and Abiathar the priests with you there? So it shall be that what... Whatever you hear from the king's house, you shall report to Zadok and Abiak or the priest. And behold, their two sons are with me, are with them there, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiak, their sons. And by them you shall send me everything that you hear. And Hushai, David's friend, came to the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Absalom came into Jerusalem. Now let's look and see what happened. David's sin multiplies. David did a lot of kindnesses, didn't he? He, he made one bleed, great big blatant blunder. But he did a lot of good things in his life. And when David had passed the 16 and verse 1, a little beyond the summit, behold, Ziba, the servant of who? The servant of who? Who is that? Who? Mephibosheth. But what happened with Mephibosheth? Remember? That's Jonathan's son, isn't it? Saul's grandson, Mephibosheth. Is that the one that was left out? This is the one that's crippled. Yeah, they, and they took This is the crippled boy. Yeah. They went and got him. All right, and David said, Is there a son left of Jonathan, of Saul's descendant? I want to show kindness to him. Let's see what happened when he showed kindness. When David showed kindness. Ziba, the servant of the sheep the ship, met him with a couple of saddle donkeys, and on them were two hundred loaves of bread, a hundred clusters of raisins, raisin cakes, and a hundred summer fruits, dried, whatever they were, and a jug of wine. Man, that's like a buffet. Huh? That's, that's a lot of food, but they're going, to, they're going to need it. I'm telling you. David's men one time, raisins have got a lot of what in them? Energy. And protein too. Energy, sugar. One time his men were without food and he got raisin cakes for them and the raisin and date cakes have got a lot of sugar and energy in them. They're going to need this. This man was thinking ahead. A <coughs> hundred loaves of bread. Two hundred loaves of bread. A hundred clusters of raisin and a hundred summer, summer fruits and a jug of wine. And the king said to Ziba, why do you do these things? And Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride, and the bread and summer food for the young men to eat, and the wine for whoever is faint in the wilderness to drink, because it was going to be bad there. Because there isn't hardly any water out there in the wilderness. David's been exiled. Where was Jesus tempted and tried? In the wilderness. Or the wilderness. That's right, out in the wilderness. This is where... Then the king said, Where is your master's son? Who is this now? Mephibosheth. And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is staying in Jerusalem, for he said, Mephibosheth now, that's 
His feet is underneath the table of David, sitting with all of his sons. Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. Even this one that he showed kindness to now is turned against him. Even Mephibosheth. And so the king said to Ziba, Behold, all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. Fix old Mephibosheth. <laughs> Fix old Mephibosheth. <laughs> yeah. And Ziba said, I prostrate myself. Let me and favor in your sight, O, o my lord, the king. And verse number 5 now. And King David came to Baharim. And behold, there came out from there a man of the family of the house of Saul whose name was Shimei. Now remember Shimei now. Shimei. He's of the house of Saul. Now this is one of Mephibosheth's relatives. Now David didn't kill these people, did he? He let these people live. Usually when a king takes over, and when the dynasty is there, he kills every man, woman, and child that's in that family. But David didn't do it. Every one of these David showed kindness to. This is mercy. Just think about it now. Jesus showed mercy to everyone that he walked and come in contact to when he went through Jerusalem. Didn't he? But what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes called for his death. Didn't they? A man from the family of the house of Saul who David had shown mercy to by letting him live the son of Gera came out cursing continually as he came. He's cursing David. He's asking Jehovah to, blast, to, to destroy David. Now. And, they threw, and he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were at his right hand and his left. Mighty men. These are personal bodyguards. These are the greatest soldiers in Israel. And this man is blaspheming David in front of all of his elite guard. Thus Shimei said when he cursed, Get out, get out, you man of bloodshed, you worthless fellow. You worthless fellow. You know, we got words in English, but they're not usable for this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Adjectives. Use yeah, four adjectives. Letters. Four letters usually. Yeah, <laughs> lots of words. That's what he was doing. He's cursing him. And the Lord has returned upon you the bloodshed of the house of Saul. Well, I'm going to tell you something. He's still alive. He, if it wasn't for the mercy of David, he wouldn't be talking. Would he? By the grace. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And this is an ungodly buzzer. Now, I want you to take note of this. There was a guy in the book of Esther that had a niece and her name was Esther. That's a descendant of this man right here. You're talking about him? Huh? Uh, uh, Mordecai. Mordecai, yeah. That's right. This is Mordecai's ancestor right here. And they got they hung that guy. What's his name? Well, uh, Hamel or Haman. Haman? Yeah. Haman was a descendant of the king that Saul let live. And here now, David showed mercy to Shimei, and Shimei is an ancestor of Mordecai. Grace. We have grace. The Lord has returned upon you the bloodshed of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned, and the Lord has given the kingdom in the heaven of your, into the hand of your son Absalom, peace from the father. Remember, that's what Absalom means. And he's the one that David loved the most. And behold, you are taken in your own evil, for you are a man of bloodshed. Boy, I mean, he's laying it out now. David can't really say you're lying, can he? Is this the chickens coming home to roost on David's own head? Yeah, they are. Don't ever think you can sin and get fired. Okay, now hold on. Hold on. Don't ever think you can sin and get fired. So what happened to the kid? Mordecai, how's that, how they related to Mordecai? Mordecai is Shimei's descendant. Okay. Okay. And Haman 
was a Anax descendant. All right. And Abishai, the son of Zeruah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and cut his head off. Again. Now David could have had this man killed right here. Two times he shows this man mercy. So far. Two times. But the king said, What have I to do with you, O sons of Zeruah? If he curses, and if the Lord has told him, Curse David, then who shall say, Why have you done so? David says he's telling the truth. David is owning his sin. That's what he's doing. He's owning his sin. Because David is a great man. And you know, a great man's a great man even when he's down. He did wrong, and he admitted his wrong, and he went on. But now he's suffering the consequences of his wrong. Through his own child that he loved so much. Just like Joseph there. You're a good guy. His name means you take the curse away, remember? Uh-huh. <laughs> Joseph. So I'm out of the woods, man. But what happened? <laughs> what happened if you were the king of Bakersfield? King of Bakersfield. That's right. The king, king of Bakersfield. Of Bakersfield. The king bit of Bakersfield. And then your son, your only son that you love so much, Decided to do this to you. I don't know, that'd be tough. It would be tough, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, Bill, you don't have a son, or you don't even have a grandson. No, nothing. nothing. Oh, God. Lord decided I didn't think one. You didn't think one, Bill. But what if one of them daughters did? Yeah, torture him. You know, and now, now that'd be rough, wouldn't it? Yeah. What because you know what needs, David needs to do is kill his son. Yeah. He needed to go do like the Indians said, you, you made him, you take care of him. Yeah. Cut his throat. And you know what gets you go me do in, it. What gets me in this, this this story here is nothing in this world can hurt you more than your kids. That's right. They yeah, say when a little child, when he's little, he walks on your feet. Yeah. When they get bigger, they walk on your heart. Yeah. That's what happened. David loved this boy. Yeah. No, David then was, David, David said to Abishai and all the, the servants, Behold my son who came out. From me seeks my life. How much more now this Benjamite? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him so. He said, I own my sin. Evidently God caused him to curse me because I'm wrong. I was wrong. Perhaps the Lord will look on my affliction and return good to me instead of, of this cursing today. David was right. David was right. Two times now he shows mercy to Shimei. We're going to find out that he shows him mercy three times. So David and his men went on the way. The Shimei went along the hillside parallel with him, and he kept on cursing and cast on uh, throwing stones and threw dust at him. Pretty hard to take, but David was a great man. I'm going to tell you something. He did wrong, but when he, when he repented, he repented. It takes a repentant man to put up with this, I'm telling you. And the king and all the people who were with him arrived weary, and he refreshed himself there. And Absalom and all the people and the men of Israel entered Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with them. And now came back the Hushai, the Archite, and David's friend came to Absalom. And Hushai said to uh, Absalom, Long live the king, long live the king. And Absalom said to his Hushai, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why do you not go with your friend? Then Hushai said to Absalom, No, from whom the Lord... This people and all the men of Israel have chosen his, his will I be, and with him I will remain. And besides whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? I have served in your father's presence, and so I will be in your presence. And Absalom said, Ahithophel, give your advice. What shall we do? And Ephel said to Absalom, go to your father's concubine. Go and rape your father's wives. That's what he told him to do. This is the spiritual leader of Israel, Ahithophel was, but this is also Bathsheba's relative. Remember that. Now he holds a grudge against David terribly. Remember, from that balcony is where David saw Bathsheba. 
Now on the balcony is where Absalom is going to rape his father's wives in the sight of all of Israel. Go to your father's concubines whom he has left and keep the house and then all Israel will hear that you have made yourself odious to your father and the hands of all who are with you will also be strengthened. And so they pitched a tent for Absalom on the rooftop for everybody to see. When you went into Jerusalem you could see that. And Absalom parading David's wives out there and taking them in there and laying with them. For everybody to see. Now David did it secretly, didn't he? Remember? 2 Samuel 12 and verse 11. Go read that. 12 and verse 11. 2 Samuel 12 and verse 11. This is a hard dose of medicine here. And David's taking it in stride. Because David is a great man. This is a hard dose to swallow. Brother Rex, are you over there? No. 12 and verse 11? Uh, I will be Bill? Yep. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. I hope you left them the ugly ones. <laughs> and the advice of Ahithophel, which he gave in all those days was as if in one inquired of the word of the Lord. So all the advice of Ahithophel regarded by both David and Absalom. Boy, this is a rough road here, isn't it? You know, the Bible put it all, that God put it all down in his word. Yeah. David is a type of Christ in so many ways. But boy, he's a type of us too, isn't he? And a type of our our sinfulness. Furthermore, in 17 and verse 1, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Please let me choose 12,000 men that I may rise and pursue David tonight. 12,000 men. Remember how many men David sacrificed there? He, he sacrificed the elite guard with Uriah. Uriah was part of the elite guard. Bodyguard of the king. Verse number 2, And I will come upon him while he is at weary, and exhausted, and will terrify him so that all the people who are with him will flee. Then I will strike down the king alone. And I will bring back all, all the people to you and return of everyone depends on, on the man you seek. Then all the people shall be at peace. So the plan pleased Absalom and all the elders of Israel. All the judges. Oh. Verse number 5, Then Absalom said, Now call Hushai the archai also, and let us hear what he has to say. And when Hushai had come to Absalom, Absalom said to him, At head of hell has spoken, Thus shall we carry out this plan. If not, speak. Tell me, do you think this is right? And Hushai said to Absalom, This time the advice that Ahithophel has given you is not good. Here is a good man. He's going to tell the truth no matter what. Just remember, now, Absalom thinks that Hushai is a plant by David. And he thinks that, hey, he's going to tell me to do the wrong thing. So I'm going to do the other. Moreover, Hushai said, you know your father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they are fierce like a bear, robbed over cubs in the field. And your father is an expert in warfare, and will not spend the night with the people. Behold, he has now hidden himself in one of the caves, or in another place, and it will be when he, when he falls on them at the first attack, that whoever hears it will say, there has been a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. He says, they'll kill these men. Absalom, if you go after David, they're going to get killed. And even the one who is valiant, whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will completely lose heart, for all of Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and those who are with them are mighty men. They are elite soldiers. They are the best. But I counsel all Israel who surely gathered to you from Dan even to Beersheba. 
as the sand, uh, as the sand that is by the sea is abundance, and that you personally go into battle. So we shall come to him in one of the places where it can be found, and will fall upon him all that the, as the dew falls on the ground, and, all, and of him and all the men who are with him, not even one will be left. And if he withdraws into the city, then all of Israel shall bring ropes to that city and will drag it into the valley until not even a small stone is found there. And Absalom, all the men of Israel, said, The counsel of Hushai the Archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord has adorned, ordained to thwart the good counsel of Ahithophel in order that the Lord might bring calamity to Absalom. Whew. Now Hushai said to Zadok and Abiaph, they were the priests. This is what I have for hell counseled Absalom and the elders of Israel, and this is what I have counseled. Now therefore sing quickly and tell David, saying, Do not spend the night in the fords of the wilderness, but all by the means go cross over. Let the king and all the people with all of them be destroyed. Now Jonathan and Amaz were staying at in, in Rogel, and a maidservant who would go and tell him, when they go tell King David, for they could not <coughs> be seen entering the city. But a lad did did see them and told Absalom and so the two of them departed quickly and, and came to the house of the man in Baharim who had a well in the courtyard and they went down into it there. And the woman took a cup and spread over the well's mouth. Now here's where David is hid from his son. And Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house and said, Where is Amahaz and Jonathan? And then we're going to go on down here. In verse 21, it came about that they had departed, that they came up out of the well and went and told David. And they said to David, Arise and cross over the water quickly, for thus Ahithophel has counseled against you. And verse 23, And then Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, and he saddled his donkey and arose and, and went to his home, to his city, and set his house in order and strangled himself. He hung himself. And thus he died and was buried in the grave of his father. Verse 24, And David came to Mahanim, and Absalom crossed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom set out Amasai over the army in place of Joab. Now Amasai was the son of a man whose name was Jethro, the Israelite who went with Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, his sister of Arubah, Joab's mother. And Israel and Absalom camped in the land of uh, Gilead. And now when David came to Mahanaim, Shobi, the son of Nahash, and Rabbah, the sons of Ammon, and Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lobar, which means no pastor, and Bethazeli, the Giladite from Rogalim. And boy, these are a lot of hard names, aren't they? They brought beds of raisins, pottery, and wheat, and barley, and flour, and parched grain, and beans, and lentils, and parched seeds, and honey, and curds, and sheep, and cheese from the herd, and for David his people were with him to eat, and they said the people were hungry, and very thirsty in the wilderness. And David numbered all the people with him, all of his commanders, and he starts his war. And he put so many men under Abishar and Ittai, and uh, verse number three, and the people said, you shall not go out. Again, remember what I told you? They wouldn't let David fight because they loved him too much. Remind this, mark this in your Bible. This is very important. But the people said, you shall not go out, for if we indeed flee, there will not be one of us. No one will care about one of us. Even the half of us die. They will not care about us, but if you were... But you are worth 10,000 of us, therefore now it is better that, that you be ready to help us from the city. They told David, you're worth 10,000 men. 10,000 men will die for you. Then the king said to them, whatever seems best to you, I will do. So the king stood beside the gate, and all the people went out by the hundreds and the thousands. The king charged Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. He tells them, don't hurt him. Who should have killed Absalom? Should. David should have gone after him himself. But it's too hard, wasn't it? Well, he hung himself. Though, it's too hard. Oh, but that's coming next week. 
That's the end of the story for there. This preview of the coming attraction. Brother Bill, you're going to have to get on the internet to hear the rest of the story. Right there is where we're going to quit. Right there. All right. The rest of the story. Deal gently with my son, Absalom. Deal gently with my son, Absalom. And we'll start back there next week. All right. Was that an exciting, terrible story today? But it came from God's Word, and it's inspired from God's Word. That just goes to show you it's good to walk on the straight and narrow. Is it good to not sin? <laughs> Is it good to not sin? Is it good? Will your sin find you out? We'll know what he says, do Yeah. <laughs> you can be assured he will. David was a great man. He was a great man when he was down, wasn't he? Now that shows you how great he was is when he was down. What kind of did he show still mercy when he was down? When they were trying to kill him and showing no mercy to him, David was still showing mercy. When Jesus was being slapped and bitten and beaten and, and, and on the cross, Jesus said up on the cross, he said, Lord, forgive them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We're going to see the rest of the story later. It's a good story. All right? Brother David, thank you for enduring those hard seats today. I'll be teaching the book of Genesis this afternoon at 4.30 here, so the Lord willing, and I, I still can get up here and say a few words. Go out and do something eternal this week. Okay, on our prayer list today... Uh, me and Bonnie would like us to pray for a cure for Lyme disease for one of our friends' daughter, Kristen.